Welcome back. This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and this is a refreshed video about plotting in SimSmith. I recently asked for some topic suggestions, and this topic repeatedly came up. There are links below the video to three previous videos that will also be useful to understanding plotting better, and a link to download all the files used in this video. Plotting is about graphically showing how a circuit performs, but it's only part of a bigger explanation. Let's quickly look at what SimSmith provides for plotting by default. This is a simple circuit comprised of a 25 ohm load resistor, capacitor of 318 picofarads, and a ruse block which contains a series resistor of 23 ohms. We're going to plot that from 1 to 100 megahertz, 51 points logarithmically spaced, logarithmically spaced on our graph down here. And this is the curve you get for power into the load, which is enabled right here, and we see the, the SWR is seen by the generator with the dark blue curve. And that's the same as before. However, in version 18, there's a big change. And the big change is that the power plotting now is both power into the component and power consumed by the component based on how you have this set right here. So for left arrow, this is the power delivered into this part this is, the power, this is the power delivered into this part, and this is the power delivered into this part. However, if I, and while I'm doing this, let me put another curve on here quickly. This will be the power delivered into component A from the generator. If I click here, I see 0.793 watts, and this says 0.793 watts. If I click here, this changes to 0.379 watts. However, this curve also changes down here. It used to not change. It only changed up here for the display and the curve stayed the same, but now both change. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's certainly bound to confuse some people. Just be very careful about it. Another thing that SimSmith gives us is a notes block. And if you click here and say show notes block, and I put the first line always says, please read me to kind of get your attention. This describes what I just talked about. So be careful about power plotting in version 18 until you become a little bit more familiar with it because it can get you in trouble. However, the, the power into the load is the same whether it's dissipated by the part or into the, into the uh, block. In addition to that, SimSmith provides us the ability to right click on any component like in the ruse block and get some default plotting that SimSmith has chosen that we might want to use. And all we do is click on whichever piece we want to we want to show. And in this case, SimSmith gives us new components. It names them for us. We cannot change the name. The names are fixed based on what we clicked on. However, you can still change the colors of these if you wish. SimSmith will always make whatever is plotting in voltage be on the Y1 axis, whatever is plotting in current on the Y2 axis. Again, you cannot change that with the defaults. I don't typically use these because to get rid of these and turn them back on again, I have to come back to each component and unclick anything I want or don't want and, and keep clicking on what I do want. So I typically don't do it that way, but it's, it's something if you need just one or two additional little plots, it works pretty nicely. Also, by having the plotting control in the block, if I was to delete the block, I don't get an error in SimSmith. If I had the plotting done somewhere else, I would get an error because I'd be referring to something that didn't exist. Another thing to consider is that SimSmith also gives us the ability to have markers. A marker is very useful in terms of trying to show what's going on. The markers can only be placed at the positions where the, where the actual points are. There's 51 points in this, in this uh, graph right here, and they're equally spaced because it's, they're logarithmically typed and we have... Uh, logarithmically spaced uh, x-axis. We can also right-click on these and they become a text marker. You can put any text you want in here. You can change its size. You can also change its color to be whatever you wish. And that should help also with uh, documentation as to what's going on with your, with your circuit. That's what SimSmith gives us by default. Now let's look at what SimSmith gives us optionally. SimSmith provides four lines of little tabs which can either be enabled or disabled as if you wish to have the plot shown or not 
And as you add more and more things to plot, the blocks will become smaller and the text will become smaller in them. And in that case, you end up being tempted to use shorter names for the plot. Sometimes that's not very descriptive and that is counterproductive to wanting the circuit to show, you know, what you're actually doing. So what you can do is something that's really simple and it's really kind of clever. And that is you can use some of the programming capabilities of SimSmith. And what I've done here is, is said, if graph is less than 1.5, I'm going to do graph one stuff. So I'm going to create a variable here called graph. It's going to have increment of one. I'm going to use values one and two. So if, graph, if the graph is less than 1.5, I'm going to do this graphing. If graph is greater than what else, so it's greater than 1.5, I'm going to do this stuff. So what we see is if I have graph set to one, I see these graphs possible. And if I change this to be two, I have a new set. So you can mix and match how you do this. But if you want, if you have a very complicated circuit, and I've run into this many times, I have more things that I want to plot than really makes sense. But I'll never going to, I'm never going to plot them all at the same time. So I put a group of them in one, in one area, and another group of them in another area, and SimSmith is perfectly happy with that. So that's a really clever way to uh, allow more descriptive names to be used. SimSmith provides four lines of little tabs which can either be enabled or disabled as if you wish to have the plot shown or not. As you add more and more things to plot, the blocks will become smaller and the text will become smaller in them. And in that case, you end up being tempted to use shorter names for the plot. Sometimes that's not very descriptive and that is counterproductive to wanting the circuit to show, you know, what you're actually doing. So what you can do is something that's really simple and it's really kind of clever. And that is you can use some of the programming capabilities of SimSmith. And what I've done here is, is said, if graph is less than 1.5, I'm going to do graph one stuff. So I'm going to create a variable here called graph. It's going to have increment of one. I'm going to use values one and two. So if graph, if the graph is less than 1.5, I'm going to do this graphing. If graph is greater than what else, so it's greater than 1.5, I'm going to do this stuff. So what we see is if I have graph set to one, I see these graphs possible. And if I change this to be two, I have a new set. So you can mix and match how you do this. But if you want, if you have a very complicated circuit, and I've run into this many times, I have more things that I want to plot than really makes sense. But I'll never going to I'm never going to plot them all at the same time. So I put a group of them in one in one area and another group of them in another area, and SimSmith is perfectly happy with that. So that's a really clever way to uh, allow more descriptive names to be used. I would like to encourage you to download the file, all the files, and go through some of this. I can't go through it all in a video, or the video would take entirely too long, but there's lots of different ways to plot. In some cases, you say plot, and you say where you're going to plot it. Other cases, you just can say the, the destination directly. So there's multiple choices of things you can plot. You can say Smith something, or you can say plot on the Smith chart. So it's kind of, there's some of it's a holdover from old stuff, and some of it's new stuff. Some of it works correct for harmonics, and some of it doesn't. But nevertheless... Let's just look at some of the things. And there's a there's a lot of stuff in here, so I'd encourage you to, to, to download the files, play with them. But I'm doing the same thing I did previously with different groups of graphs. And the fundamental thing that we're going to do is the plot command has five different possible options in it. One is line specs. Line specs also includes colors. It includes stamps if you're going to plot like stars or triangles. A name for the plot what you're plotting, what axis name you're going to use if you if you specify the axis. And that's pretty much it. The only thing that's required is the what. And what can be a number, it can be a formula, it can be pretty much anything you want it to be. So let's look at the first the first one. For graph one, that's this group right here. The first thing I'm going to plot is a dot v, which is this let's get rid of these momentarily. It's a stroke of four, so we can have a bold, we can have a bold line. And if we don't do anything and just just do say L dot V, we again get a wave, which is two cycles if the graph if the graph has not been zoomed in. 
and it shows phase correctly. And the phase phase where you start at zero is the generator phase. In this case, it's an absolute voltage source. It's 10 volts. We see the voltage across the load. We can see the voltage across the, um, the resistor, the voltage across the capacitor. The sum of all three of those should be this trace. And that's exactly what this, this one is right here. We're going to do the wa a wave for R1, the voltage across it, the voltage across the load, and the voltage across A dot C1 dot V. There's a capacitor in here, in this case. And we add those all up, and we see the green, the green dotted trace lines up underneath the, the wide blue trace. Now, if we look at the next graph, we see what we can plot various different ways. But one of the things we can't plot, we cannot plot complex numbers on this, on this graph directly. What we do is if we, so if we plot R1.V, and V does not have a phase of zero, SimSmith will give us an error. But we can plot R1.V.M for the magnitude. We could plot the angle. We could plot the real part with the imaginary part. But we could plot the magnitude in this case. We could also say magnitude R1.V, or we could say RMS R1.V. All three of these give us the same, the same answer. And I kind of go back and forth. Some of them are holdovers for, from older times. RMS works nice because if you do harmonics, it also includes the value of all the, harmo the harmonic frequencies in the RMS calculation, where, where V does not. And continuing on, here we plot stamps. And in this case, I, I consider a stamp to be something like a drawing program would call a stamp. And that's where you go along with like a you know, rubber stamp and you just stamp it at various places. Now, the size of things in the, stamp, in the stamps are determined by a couple things. The circle size factor determines it. And also, believe it or not, if you do a stroke, the stroke will also determine it. So let's look at the default in this case. For my circle size, the first thing I'm going to plot here is going to be a default, the default, the default case I marked here. And now with fewer things plotted, I don't run out of space here. I can have my, my names be more descriptive. With default, the default is just plotting the value zero. We see, maybe that's a little more descriptive. So we're plotting the value zero. There's no action here with frequency or anything. We're just plotting zero along the whole, whole line. And that's the default line width. Now, if we say stroke one, we get a thin line. If we say stroke two, we get the normal line width. Then we can also say stroke five, eight, comma four. This is width of eight. The dashed period is eight units long. And the gap between them is four. And likewise, I can plot 5, 4, 8, and that gives me this graph. So the on and off times are, are you know, opposite each other. Then we can say plot stars. Now, st when we plot any of the stamps, the st we get a point only where there is actually a point. So if we were to go across this graph and count them, there would be 51 stars there. So if you do something foolish like saying, like say you want... 510 points, what happens is the stamps effectively turn into a line. So you have to pick a, reason, pick a reasonable number. But if you do that, they can, be, they can be descriptive. So we have stars, diamonds, small triangles, and large triangles. And I did the triangles by saying, tri the first one, triangles, is the default size for the triangle. The large one, since I said stroke four, that affected the triangles. So they became larger. It's kind of interesting, the, you get interactions between uh, some of the different features, but nevertheless, uh, it, it works pretty well. Now let's look at graph four plots. In graph four, we have, in this case, I'm gonna say stroke is four, color is green. And that color is defined right here directly. I gave it a name, we called it name. And what I plotted was R1 dot small v and the magnitude of it. I plotted it on something that's going to be labeled axis, which is axis, and it's and it's, it is axis y2. So that's what that's what this graph is. Now the second one is an RMS plot of R1 dot K1 
capital V, so I don't need to say magnitude there. That's the voltage going into R1. But I've specified an RGB color of 1, 0.5, 0 with a transparency of 1. And that's a interesting way to plot. If you plot this way, these can be variables and you can change the color on the fly. This is just a specified color one time. This one can be changed on the fly. And there's nothing to stop me from doing the color stroke six and plot big circles. And it's just more ways to plot. I can do the same thing on the down here. In this case, I'm going to plot on the Smith chart some things. So let's go to the Smith chart and we can see right there I'm plotting squares. I declared the name of the plot to be called Smith here. Here I'm going to declare the name to be called plot. I mean they may they may not make sense but you can see what's what's being done. It's the same plot as what you had before for A but I can make these be with the symbols or stamps. It's incredibly flexible. What you do is kind of up to you but the goal should be, in all cases, you should be aimed towards trying to make the circuit readable and trying to make the circuit understandable to you and even better to make it understandable to someone else. This video is getting kind of long, so let's do this kind of quickly. But the colors you pick are much more easily defined if the line width is a little bit wider. So for narrower line widths, it's harder to tell the colors apart than it is for wider line widths. All I have here in this circuit is just a bunch of transmission lines in series, and I'm looking at the, the voltage and current at, at each different segment, and you can see the delay in each of the curves, and then I plotted a couple other things also. But uh, just be careful that if you start to use colors, you know, too many colors, you won't be able to tell them apart. Markers can help you in that regard. Also, you can change the line patterns, and that'll help too. Just a, that's just a suggestion. And to finish things up, in video number 88, which is linked below, I talked about stale data. You have to be careful if you're going to index something or change it, where you change it relative to where things are plotted. In this case right here, I have a value for index, just it's set to be four. But what I do is I plot the value of g dot abc so g dot abc which is four right now i plot it then over here i plot it again so the first one is labeled stale the second one's labeled also stale and then i index it then i plot it so here's here's the here's the correct data here's the first data here's the second data so these are all one step behind if i change this value the first the first point changes and that's all. But these are all off one step. You need to be careful about that and I mentioned I did the whole video on that topic. So if this is something you think you run into, you don't really notice this very much. If we made this say a thousand points or a hundred points, these two lines get closer together. We make it a thousand points. They're even or even closer yet. However, the first point will be wrong. All the rest will be wrong by one va by one step. But the, you may not notice it here. I thought I'd mention that uh, something to also keep in mind. If you like the video, let me know, please. Give me a lot, thumbs up and you know that kind of stuff. Also, tell your friends about Sim Smith if you think that it would be something that they would be interested in.